Pentecost Sunday, I was reminded of this uh, earlier in the week. I was actually going to do a sermon on, uh, continue my, my series on deception, but inside of me, I felt there was a need to, to honor the Holy Spirit in a special way on Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And I'm going to read a scripture here from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, well-known scripture from uh, verse 1. It says this, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, can you say suddenly? Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat, sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's read that again. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Utterance. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk today about speaking in tongues. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk today about speaking in tongues. You know something? God has really blessed us. And I'm going to show you through the scriptures why each one of us if you have the gift of speaking in tongues, if you have that gift, I'm going to challenge you to stir that gift up. If you don't have that gift and you want that gift, you will get that gift today. But I want to bring some teaching concerning speaking in tongues so that there's clarity in all our minds. Because everything God grants us or gives us is good. God will never give us something that is not helpful. Amen? Now, there's something about speaking in tongues. You know, in the Christian faith, there are different denominations that believe different things. And I want you to just for a moment, for the next few moments, put what aside whatever your prejudices are, whatever your conceptions are. Just track with me for the next few minutes as we just go through the scriptures and see the relevance of speaking in tongues. If you, if you will track me, we say, I'll track with you. Amen. Now, God blessed us with Jesus the Son of God. He blessed because He loved the world. He also blessed us with the Holy Spirit because He loved the world, and especially believers. And there's so many things the Holy Spirit does for us. One of the things is that He helps us. And one of the areas He helps us is in the area of prayer, as well as in the area of worship. Okay, you're going to see very shortly how the Holy Spirit helps us in the area of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is one of the, not, the gifts that was given by the Holy Spirit. It's not the only gift, obviously. There's the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, there's the gift of healing. There's, there's gifts of healing, actually. There's the gift of miracles and interpretation of tongues and the prophecy. There's the gift of preaching, teaching. Then, of course, there's the ministry gifts of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. These are all given by God, amen, through Jesus Christ, and these are all gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the Bible says it's to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, they, they, they have a mission. Their mission is somehow that the work of God will be done by each one of us, amen? And the Holy Spirit, when He was poured, He came with gifts, gifts to men, so there's ministry gifts and there's individual gifts, but the Bible says every single believer has a gift. So if you're a believer and you don't know your gift, I'm here to announce that according to the Bible, you have a gift. You may not know it, but you have a gift. Can I hear a good amen? So the gifts of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And unfortunately, it's one of the gifts that a lot of people are not attracted to. But sometimes the things that are not necessarily attractive that are very, very valuable. When you see gold in its original state, it doesn't look attractive. But man, it's valuable. Amen? And today you're going to see the value of the Holy Spirit and also the value of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is basically a special ability God gives His people to pray or to praise in a language that they have not learned. That's basically it. It's the special ability God gives to praise in a language not learned or to communicate a message from God to His people. I like that definition by Ron Ellis. 
It's a language that you have not learned, and yet God gives it to you, and He gives it to you for prayer and for praise. Can you say prayer? And say praise. Now, it's sometimes a language that is known on this earth, and many times it's a language that is unknown. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, if I speak in the tongues of men or, and of angels. So sometimes it is an unknown language on this earth. Okay, so it could be an angelic language. It could be a language that is known on this earth, but you have not learned that language. Glory to God. I wish the Holy Spirit would give me the ability to speak French and Spanish and Portuguese. All like that, right? No, but he gives you a language. It's of men or of angels. The gift of speaking in tongues, you know, there's the gift of speaking in tongues. There's another gift called the gift of speaking in diverse kinds of tongues. And I'll just go into it briefly. There are two, tw twice in the book of Corinthians, this is mentioned. First of all, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's the gift of variety of tongues or different kinds of tongues, which is really a ministry gift. And I'll go into that in a minute. And that one has to operate with the gift of interpretation. Then there's another gift that Paul speaks about and teaches on, which is the gift of speaking in tongues, which is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. There are two separate gifts of speaking in tongues. A lot of people don't know this, but there are two separate gifts of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift that is given to this dispensation of grace. All the other gifts of the Holy Spirit, whether it's the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, miracles, healing, prophecy, they all happen in the Old Testament as well. The only New Testament gift of the Holy Spirit in the dispensation of grace is speaking in tongues. Now, the Bible tells us that the, 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 the Old Covenant was good, right? But the New Covenant is better. So can, I want you to begin to realize that he has added the gift of speaking in tongues under the better covenant. And yet the church today rejects speaking in tongues. But it's the only New Testament gift that is not seen in the Old Testament. Speaking in tongues of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you these two scriptures. So the first one is in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. It says, um, he's talking about, you know, he's given some to be apostles and some to be prophets and so on. And he says, to another, different kinds of tongues. That's how he terms it. Different kinds of tongues. This is really important because I know growing up, I was so confused about this. But you're going to see in a minute, in a, in a few minutes, why this is important. So there's the gift of different kinds of tongues. And then you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, and it says, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, okay? Now, I'm going to show you the differences in a minute. The differences here is that when you are speaking a different kind of tongue, it is God speaking through an individual in a language they have not learned, but God is speaking to his people. Now, that always has to be accompanied by the gift of interpretation of tongues. So it's God speaking to the congregation or speaking to his people in an unknown language, and then it comes with the interpretation of tongues. So that's what we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Then you go to the second speaking in tongues, where it's the, the gift of an unknown language that you, you've just, uh, you just be able to speak. That is speaking in tongues, and this is man speaking to God, and that is prayer. Are you with me so far? Help me out a little bit. Are you with me so far? So I said there are two different kinds of speaking in tongues. 1 Corinthians 12 is when God is speaking to man, okay, and that is through a prophetic word, and that's usually accompanied by interpretation of tongues. Then there's a second one, which is where, where Paul says, I would all, that all of you spoke in tongues. That is the personal gift of speaking in tongues, and it is man speaking to God. We're going to look at this. It's going to be so exciting. So unlike the ministry gift of different kinds of tongues, which you see in 1 Corinthians 12, I believe all believers can and have, can have speaking in tongues as one of their personal gifts because speaking in tongues is for personal edification. Now, we're going to get into this a bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 30 says this. 
I, I, I just quoted that. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 5 refers to the personal gift of speaking in tongues. And you know what? The Bible says that it's something that Paul said that I would that every one of you spoke in tongues. He says, I, I wish that all of you would speak in tongues. In fact, Jesus makes this comment in, in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. He says, these signs will follow those who believe. Now, this is the real qualifier. This is the qualifier. It says, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. And notice what it says, they will speak with new tongues. So the real qualifier to have this gift, this precious gift of the Holy Spirit, is that you believe. That is the qualifier. Now, you know what? If you don't believe, I'm, you're not going to have this gift. But if you believe, you're a candidate for this gift. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So speaking in tongues, I want to just relate it in terms of prayer. Speaking in tongues. Now, typically when we pray, you and I pray, we pray with our soul. Now, the Bible makes it clear that you and I, are, uh, you know, we are triune, triune beings in the sense that we have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. The body is what you see. So you see my body. Now, you can get at me in terms of my emotions or whatever. You can then see what I'm, you know, how I'm, what I'm made of. You can see my attitude, whether I'm a whiner or whether I'm positive or whatever. That's my soul, the emotions, the, the will, the, the intellect, the conscience. It's all part of the soul. But then there's also the spirit. Our spirits are born again. That is part of us. So every Christian is spirit, soul, and body. Every person is spirit, soul, and body. Are you with me? Okay. So most of the time when you and I pray, we pray with our soul. We pray with our understanding. We put together words that we understand and we put it up to God. We petition God with our understanding, right? Sometimes we use our body. We may kneel in reverence. We may lift up our hands. We may stamp our feet in desperation or we may raise our voice, you know. And so we, you can use our body. We can use our, our soul. But we typically pray with our soul, with our understanding. So when we pray to God, we understand exactly what we are saying to Him. Amen? But the interesting thing is this. We have a spirit that also prays. And God knows our limitation in prayer. How many of you would humbly admit that sometimes it's difficult for you to pray? Okay, only Pastor Bob. Wow. I'll try that again. How many of you would admit that it's often difficult to pray? Yes. All of us have weaknesses in prayer, as in many other things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, and especially in the area of prayer. Especially in the area of prayer. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says this, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Now, that's, if you don't think that you don't have, you, 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 uh, you, you have issues with prayer, the Bible is saying you have issues with prayer. That sometimes you don't know what to pray for as you ought to pray. But praise God, the Bible says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Amen. It says, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be, be uttered. Okay, praise God. So the Holy Spirit is willing to help us pray. And that's where he helps us in the area of our spirit man. Remember I said we pray typically with our souls, occasionally with our body and our soul, but mainly with our soul. But the Holy Spirit helps us to pray in the area of the spirit man. And I'm going to give you some scriptures to show this so that you know I'm not making this thing up. Bible says this in Jude 20, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit helps us in prayer, and he helps us in prayer. That's why the Bible often terms speaking in tongues, praying in the Holy Spirit or praying in the Holy Ghost, okay? He's helping us. So it's not really, we are not the ones doing it in terms of the actual wordings and stuff. He's helping our spirits to pray. Okay, so in 1 Corinthians 14, 14, Paul says this, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Do you see that? My spirit prays. He's not talking about your soul. He's not talking about your mind. In fact, he goes on and says, But my understanding is unfruitful. In other words, my mind is unfruitful. I don't really know what I'm... I'm, I'm it's, not, it's not coming from the place of my understanding. Are, are you with me here? Okay, he says, my spirit prays, but my understanding, that's my mind, is unfruitful. The Amplified Version puts it this way. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me, 
praise. So what I want you to get from this is the fact that when you speak in tongues, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, it's your spirit man that is praying with the help of the Holy Spirit. It's not your soul. It's not your mind. It's not your understanding. And in fact, what is happening is that he's helping us. Oh, if only we would grasp this truth, that he's helping us. When we speak in tongues, he's helping us to pray by our spirits, by our spirit man. And that is why a lot of people don't pray in tongues because they don't understand what they are saying. There's a reason why God doesn't want you, want you to understand it. Because sometimes he, we utter mysteries, we utter things that are happening. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So to pray in the Holy Spirit is to pray with your spirit with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's to pray in, with your spirit with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'll be honest with you, you need to be humble to ask for the Holy Spirit's help. You need to be humble. If you don't think you need prayer in your prayer language, in your prayer, personal prayer devotions, then, then you, you know, you're fine. He will not help you. But if you know in your heart that sometimes you know what to pray, you, you know how to pray, but you don't know what to pray, then you, it means you need help. There are times when we are emotionally filled with grief or, or we are troubled in the inside and we can't quite put our finger on what the issue is. And we know we should pray, but we don't know how. We don't know what to pray. Right? There are times when you're, you know, you're, you're suddenly so stressed and, 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 and you know, there's an issue with your son or there's an issue with your, your, your friend and, and you know you should pray. You know you should pray in the name of Jesus to the Father, but you don't know what to pray. How many of you have been in that? Yes, we've all been in that situation. This is where the Holy Spirit will help you by praying through your spirit. When we pray in, with, in, the, in, in the Holy Spirit, what is happening is that the Holy Spirit is helping our spirits to pray in accordance with the will of God. Praise God. Okay, now the benefits of praying in the Spirit or praying the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues, number one, it builds you up. It's for your benefit. And that is why I believe the devil has robbed the church of this precious gift. It's for your benefit. It's for your benefit. In fact, of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, this is the one gift that is exclusively for your benefit. You see, I may have the gift of teaching. I may have the gift of preaching. Who benefits from it? You do. You may have the gift of helps. You may have the gift of, of prophecy. Who benefits? We do. So the gifts we have are really for each other. The Bible says to each is given the manifestation of the, of the gifts to, for the profit of all. It's to help everybody. But the one gift that is absolutely yours is speaking in tongues. And the first thing it does is it builds you up. It charges you. Let me give you some scriptures here. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. That, why, that word edifies means to build up. It means like you're charging like a battery. Sometimes, you, you know, you're going through the week, you're fired up from Sunday, Monday comes, Tuesday comes, wham! You're kind of drained. You know, you need charging up. You need to be built up. You need to be strengthened. I like what the New Living Translation says. A person who speaks in, a to in tongues is strengthened personally. What it does is it strengthens you. I said it strengthens you when you speak in tongues. It builds you up. It charges you up like a battery. Your battery may be low. You need to charge. It's like your cell phone. When your cell phone, all the, 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 the battery indicators are going down, what happens? You plug it in and you charge it up. A lot of us are like a cell phone. Every single, during the week, we have been drained because of work, because of stuff, because of life. And yet we don't charge ourselves up. When you begin to speak in tongues, guess what? It's like the charger begins to happen. You begin to build yourself up. I think that's great news. I think it's wonderful that speaking in tongues charges, up, uh, charges us up. The Bible says that it edifies us. It builds us up. It builds us up. Now, there's opportunity. You know, the Bible, there's some commandments in the Scriptures where sometimes you think, is that possible? One of them is pray without season. In other words, Keep on praying, right? And sometimes you think, what? I mean, I can pray on Wednesday night, and then you don't pray on Thursday, Friday. And you just run out of things through your finite mind. You know, our minds are finite, so there's, there's a limitation, right? But the Bible says that we should pray without season. 
The one of the ways you can do that is by speaking in tongues. It's by praying the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is praying through your spirit. It means you can do mundane things and still be praying. You can be driving on the, uh, to 401 and still be praying. If you're driving for one hour and you speak in tongues for one hour, you are praying for one hour. And the Holy Spirit will never run out of things to say. Amen? You may be doing the dishes, and guess what? You can be praying. You may be gardening. You can be praying. Suddenly, it allows us to pray in ways that we may not have thought of. Amen? Mundane things can suddenly become spiritual.